There is nothing easier, tastier, or more elegant than a cheese board, especially if you're having events or social occasions and you really want to please, maybe even impress a little bit. Because there's so many options, however, they can get overwhelming really quickly. So today I'm going to take you through making the ultimate cheese board, talking about how many cheeses to use, whether it should be charcuterie, what kind of pairings, do you want sweet pairings or not? And if you stick around to, until the end, we're going to go over a lot of artistic styling of cheese boards and how to make yours not only tasty, but beautiful. So I'm Dorothy and let's get going with our cheese boards. Okay, let's get started. The first step is a plan. Having a plan is gonna make your life so much easier. So the first thing to think about is your theme. There are tons of boards that you can make from breakfast boards to dessert boards to Guatemalan boards, that's one my daughter wants to make, um, Italian boards, and I'm gonna be focusing today on a low carb cheese board. Um, if you want to see some of these other um, ideas and made into cheese boards, look at this playlist and I plan on doing a lot of them in the future. Okay, the next part of your plan should be your guest list. Are you going to have a small group? Uh, um, three to five cheeses would be appropriate for six to eight people. Um, a large group, 20 or more, you might want to have five cheeses. You don't want too many or it's going to overwhelm. But um, those are good, good uh, guidelines to go by. Three cheeses for a small group, five cheeses for a large group. Um, the other thing to think about with your guests, however, is um, are they, do they like to drink? Are they risk averse? If so, you might just want to go with cow's milk cheeses and not get too wild. Um, if they're adventuresome, you may want to go with some really funky and exotic cheeses. Um, are they, do they have a sweet tooth? Are they keto, um, low carb? Then che cheeses and meats will make a difference. So um, the third thing to think about is your budget. Cheeses and meats can get expensive really quickly. So make a list before you go to the store, before you go to the deli. Um, and figure out exactly how many and what kind you want to get and uh, you know stick to your budget um, some of these cheeses can be like you know twenty dollars for a little wedge of, of cheese and meats the same thing and last on your plan you want to gather up your tools and your boards you don't have to go out and buy expensive cheese boards um, you look around your house you probably have some things that will work um, you want to, uh, you, can, you can use one board, you can use a range of boards. I've got a lot of different boards here. A round wood one, this one is a little slate one. You can mix and match. This one is one I got from Williams and Sonoma that has some nice porcelain markers so that you can tell people what kind of cheese they're eating. Um, so mix and match your boards. And then uh, you do want a few utensils. You need some kind of spreader for the soft cheeses. Um, you want a knife with a little um, a stabber so that you can slice and stab the hard cheeses. And you'll probably need some spoons uh, for things like spreads and everything. I put crackers in a different uh, container just so I can arrange everything around the board. So there's your plan. Now, next up, we're going to talk about the cheeses. Okay, stay tuned. Okay, let's talk cheeses. Um, for a small group, um, six to eight people, you want to have at least three cheeses. For a large group, you want to have five cheeses. Um, you can go with, you, you want diversity in your cheeses. And the diversity could be in terms of what kind of milk it is, whether it's sheep, cow, or goat. Or it could be with the intensity of the cheese or the, uh, the flavor, the color, and the texture. So what I've got here, I usually start with the soft cheeses, and that would be, this is a sheep and cow um, blend of a soft triple cream cheese, high in butter fat. This is a goat's milk cheese, and this is a soft cheese that, oops, I'm sorry, has um, blueberries and herbs uh, sprinkled throughout it. Any of those soft cheeses would work great. 
Then we move to a semi-hard cheese, and uh, my favorite is manchego, which is a Spanish cheese that has uh, some sour notes to it. Moving from semi-hard to hard would be the Gouda, um, a cow's milk cheese, and the Irish cheddar. Um, and then very hard would be Parmesan. And finally, we want to end with the funky, and that is some kind of blue cheese. It could be Stilton, Stilton or uh, Gorgonzola or some kind of blue. But that's a nice addition to your cheese plate, even for those that aren't that adventuresome. So there you have it. You got soft, semi-hard, hard, really hard, and funky. All right, on to the charcuterie, the meat part. Okay, because I'm focused on a low carb cheese board for this video, I'm using cured meats. And the cured meats, once you add that to a cheese board, it's usually known as charcuterie, which is a really fun name to say. I love to say it anyway, charcuterie. And um, it can be any kind of cured meats. Um, this is a Spanish uh, cured uh, spiced ham um, called chorizo. These are Italian cured meats. Um, they came pre-sliced, uh, prosciutto and a couple of uh, different salamis. And you can either get pre-sliced meats um, sliced very thin so that you can roll them up, or you can get your butcher to slice them, or you can get them in logs like this and slice them yourself. The only thing I would say is if you go this route, take the rind off because even though it's attractive, it's really chewy and not that pleasant to eat. So there's our cured meats for today. Okay, put the meats aside. Now for the accompaniments, um, I think of it in four stages. You want something crunchy, something briny, something sweet, and something really colorful. So the candied walnuts here are, um, because this is low carb, I did use a uh, swerve and butter and candied some walnuts, which you can find the recipe on my website. And uh, the brine, these are cor cornichons, which are little tiny, wonderful little crunchy pickles. This is a lemon marmalade, Meyer lemon marmalade. Um, you can order this from us. It is a low sugar jam, but it does have sugar. It's pretty tough to find any kind of jam without sugar. So I just say, use a little, and uh, get something that tastes really good so you don't have to use much to get the flavor. And then these are little peppers. They're a, actually, they're a cross between a tomato and a jalapeno. They're called Sweetie Drops, and they, I found them at the deli, and they're just delightful. They're really, um, really tasty to just pop in your mouth, and they add a great color to your cheese tray. So there you go. Let's go put it together. Whoops, I forgot to talk about the crackers. Um, crackers and bread are a little bit tricky on a low carb cheese plate. However, there are some options available now. I got these um, almond crackers at Costco and they're really good. If you're doing just a regular cheese plate, just make sure that your baguette or your crackers don't have a lot of um, like rosemary or herbs or asiago that competes with the flavors of the cheese. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm losing my light. So I put this together pretty quickly. Um, just a couple notes here. You wanna fill in all of the spaces. I started with the centerpiece and worked outward, arranged the cheeses. I used like uh, five cheeses. Um, put the spreaders that go with the cheese close to it. You wanna rough up the, um, the hard cheeses so that people are not intimidated by having to take the first bite. Um, got your charcuterie, your meats, uh, vary the heights. This is olives in a, in a little wine glass and uh, some garlic and uh, sweeties in um, a medium-sized glass. Crackers on the side. Uh, rolled up the prosciutto and it looks delightful to me. I think we're going to have it for dinner actually. So uh, check back on the playlist and you'll see many other arrangements for dessert cheese boards and breakfast cheese boards and I'm gonna I promised my daughter I would do the Guatemalan cheese board so let's go eat okay it's almost too elegant too pretty to eat isn't it but not quite so I think I am going to start with some quince which is one of my favorite uh, things to eat I'm gonna shave off a little bit of the manchego and quince and I feel oh so Spanish. So enjoy and come back and see more cheese boards and 
have a good holiday. If it's a holiday season for you, it is for me. Mmm. <laughs> Combination made in heaven. Mm-hmm. By the way, all the details can be found at my recipe blog, farmtojar.com. Enjoy all that life has to offer you now. Cheers!